Today, I'll be attempting to create something a little bit more difficult, although I kind of have an effect in mind that I want to recreate. I'll be trying to create it for the first time itself within this video, but I will explain exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. So it will be just like a tutorial. I don't know exactly what the outcome is going to look like, but you can see it on your screen right now. We're going to be creating this and we will be using geometry nodes. So let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then change this to the geometry node editor. Now we'll press this plus button to create a new New geometry node tree after which we'll zoom in select the group input and tap x to delete it now i'm going to go ahead and add in some sort of a sphere from which we'll have all of those particles emit so i'll press shift a and search for an icosphere and i'll simply plug this into the group output now i want this to be much larger so i'll change the radius to two meters and i'll increase the number of subdivisions to something like seven so that it's super smooth maybe a value of six will also work because i'm recording i think i'll keep it at five itself for now now i'm going to be placing my camera in this front view and i want particles to be emitting not just radially outward but also towards the camera but not directly towards the camera such that it intersects with the camera's field of view. Similarly if I do get some particles to emit from the back they'll be completely useless and not visible. So I want to make a selection such that only particles around the x z plane are going to be emitted. So let's see how we can make that sort of a selection. First let's press shift a and search for an instance on points node or a distribute points on faces node. Let's just plug this in and yes there is a selection. I want to select only these sorts of faces. So essentially only these faces should be selected. The common property that I can see of these faces is that they do not point in the Y direction. So to check if something is pointed in a particular direction, you can use the dot product. If you want to know more about the vector math node, you can definitely check out this video that's on screen right now, where I go into a bit more detail about how vector math works. For now, let's press shift A and search for a position node. And essentially the position of each of these points is equivalent to the normals, which we would get from here as well. So in fact, I don't actually need the position. I already have the normal data over here. So I'll use that. I want to check if the Y axis of the normal has a dot product with the Y axis value. But now that I'm looking at it, maybe another property that we can just use is the fact that this Y component of the position will be greater than a specific value. That way we don't even need to bother about the dot product or vector math and we can just check for the Y location. So let's actually search for a position node and simply separate out the XYZ. Let's plug this position into the vector and I want to check for both the positive y values as well as the negative y values. So I'll search for a math node and I'll switch it to absolute so that we ignore all negative values and make the negative values positive. So let's take this y and plug it in here. And now we have to compare if it is lesser than a certain value, only then should these points be distributed. So let's go ahead and press shift a and search for a compare node. And now I'm going to be comparing if this value is less than let's say one unit, only then should the point be distributed. So let's plug that into the density. And yeah, that seems to be working. Let's increase the density by quite a bit. And of course, this is the seed value that I was adjusting. I need to adjust the density. So let's just duplicate this math node. And okay, wait, instead of plugging this into the density, I should plug this into the selection. And now that works. Okay, that's great. I don't need this math node. Let's keep the density at 10 for now. And now let's start off simulating something on these. First off, I want to actually move the points towards their normals. So let's search for a simulation zone, plug the points into the input, and this can go into the output. Let's shift this to the side. And every single point, we want to take the normal of each position and push them outward in that direction. So let's search for a set position node. And let's take the normal from here as an input to the simulation zone and take the normal, plug it right into the offset. Now let's Let's just play the animation to see what we have and of course that's not working let's take this normal and plug it in here because right now the normal was becoming zero after the first frame so now it should work and yeah that seems to be working perfectly let's make sure that it doesn't go out that fast and goes a bit slower for that let's search for a vector math node we'll change it to scale and we'll scale it down by a small amount so maybe scale it down by 0.1. Make sure you plug it into the correct place and the geometry goes into the geometry. Now let's go back, play the animation and yeah, that looks perfect. Now every fifth frame, I want to add in new points because I'm going to be basing it over the frames. I'll go ahead and set my actual frame rate. My resolution is going to be 4K, so I'll make this 200. Frame rate, I'm going to make it 60. And the end frame, maybe I want this to be a five second long loop. So I'll make it 600 for the time being and once I bake the simulation I'll actually change this to start at a frame of 300 so that we get a five second long loop itself. So to add in new points every five frames I'll have to press shift a and search for a join geometry node. Now I'm going to join in a new set of faces but the seed has to change every time a new set is added in. So I'll search for a scene time node and I'll plug the frame into the seed value over here. So every frame there's a new seed that's being created. Next I want to check for these new points to get joined in but I want this join geometry to occur only every five frames. 
So I have to use a switch node. So I'll search for a switch node. I'll plug this in right here. And only if this value is true, then this should come in. So this is going to go into the true socket and not the false socket. And the false socket will just be the original geometry itself. So I can plug that in right there. Now for the switch condition, I'm going to have to check if the frame is divisible by five. So I'll search for a math node and I'll switch that to modulo. And I want a modulo with five so that every fifth frame, the remainder will be zero when I plug it in like this. So I have to check if it's zero. So I'll search for a compare node. I'll switch it to equal to and I'll change it from float to integer. So that way, whenever this value is equal to zero, only then will this switch work. In fact, it shouldn't be integer. I'll keep it at float itself plug this into the first socket and now that should work. Let's go ahead and play the animation and we are getting new points being created but they're not moving out. So maybe instead of plugging this in as an input, I'll just plug it in directly like this. So that way I don't need to care about this normal over here. Let's remove this normal by going to the node tab and just selecting normal and pressing this minus button. If you don't have this side panel open, you can tap N to bring it out. I'll tap N to bring it back in again. Now let's go back to frame zero and play the animation, see what happens. And of course it does not work. So we have to figure out exactly what's going on and how we can fix this. Let's press shift A and search for capture attribute node so that I can actually capture the normal values every single time. Plug this in right here. Use this as the geometry that goes into this joint geometry. Now I'm capturing a vector because normal is vector data. So I'll change this from float to vector. Take the normal, plug it in here. And now let's use this value in this scale over here. And that still doesn't work. Let's try plugging that in as an input. This goes in there and maybe that can go in right about there. Go back to frame zero to restart the animation and no, it's the exact same issue. Why is that happening? All right, since I am recording this tutorial, I don't wanna spend too much time thinking about why this isn't working. And instead I'll try to figure out some other solution. Let's go ahead and just delete this node. I'll tap N, go back to my node tab over here. If you can't find the node tab, make sure that you have the simulation input selected. Then you can go to the node tab and just remove this attribute node. And let's see, instead of using this, remember I also stated that we could have used the position itself, which we did right over here. So we're gonna go ahead and press Shift A and search for another position node. And we're going to use that as the vector that goes into the scale. And maybe I'll scale it down by 0.01 and let's play the animation. And now it works perfectly all right. This is great and it's working exactly the way I wanted it to work. And in fact, this makes it much better because as we go further away, it gets a bit faster, which perfectly matches what's expected to occur. However, now that I have this created, let's place the camera by selecting it, pressing Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation and R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press zero to go into my camera view followed by gy to just bring it back to some sort of a distance maybe this is going to be good enough now since i want this to loop every let's say 150 frames or in this case 300 frames i have to make sure that this random seed is also looping every 300 frames that's very simple to do all you have to do is search for a math node switch it over to modulo choose the second value to be 300 and that'll make sure that this loops every 300 frames let's go back to frame zero and just rebake this simulation and see what occurs also make sure that when you do this by frame 300 whatever first set of particles were created have to move out and when they've moved out the set of particles that were present here should also have moved out as well i'll actually test that out when i save this and bake the animation so let's go ahead and do that first and then make those changes to make sure that this is looping so i'll press ctrl s and save it and now in my physics properties i'll expand the simulation nodes and i'll just bake this animation now that the simulation has been baked, let's go ahead and change the start frame to 301. And now between frame 600 and frame 300, let's just make sure that everything is perfectly the same. And it is perfectly the same. So we do have a perfectly looping animation. Now there are a few things that I could have done to actually make sure that this animation is even more optimized. One major thing is actually calculating the age and deleting particles that have been present for longer than a certain amount of time. However, since I'm just using a few particles, I'm not going to be doing that. And I think this is good enough. I also might require these particles particles we emitting from even closer. So I'm actually going to change this less than from one to maybe a value of two. Let's just go ahead and delete the bake, change the start frame to one and rebake the animation. And okay, a value of two is too far along. So maybe a value of 1.5. And yeah, that seems much better. Let's actually reduce the density from 10 to five. And yeah, let's bake this animation. Now that it's baked, we can go back to our camera view and watch the simulation play out. We'll actually change the start frame to 301 and that's good enough. That looks perfectly all right. So let's go ahead and select the camera, go to the camera properties. I'll change the viewport display past part two all the way to one. And in fact, I should have done this before, but let's see if this works still. Let's change the focal length to 25 meters and see if it still is a looping animation. So let's just select it so that I can see the particles better. Between frame 600 and frame 300, there is no difference. So yes, it's still is looping except no there are a few new particles being present at 600 so it is not a perfect looping animation 
So I'm going to have to keep my camera focal length back at 50 itself because I don't want to spend too much of time fixing all of those issues right now. Now on each of these points, I want to instance some sort of a curve line. So let's go over to the end of the geometry node section, move the group output to the side, press shift A, search for an instance on points node, plug that in right here. For the instance, we'll use a curve line and I'll plug that into the instance right there. For the rotation, I'll simply use the position itself. So let's press shift A, search for a position node and I'll align Euler to vector. So let's search for the align Euler to vector. Now the vector is the position node. And since the curve lines are on the Z axis, I'm going to switch this to Z and plug this into the rotation. Now let's switch on overlay so that I can see the lines and that is perfect. Now to give the lines some amount of thickness, let's press shift A and search for curve to mesh node. We'll plug that in after the instance on points. And for the profile curve, I'll go ahead and use a curve circle. Now I don't need this high of a resolution. So I'll change this down to maybe six. Radius is going to be very thin. Let's make it 0.01 for now. And let's plug this curve into the profile curve. Now let's switch off overlays to see what we have. And that looks great. I think I can increase the radius to maybe 0.05. And that should look all right. Next, I need each of these to have some random color. So I'll have to capture an attribute or I'll just store the attribute to use it in the shader editor. So let's search for a store named attribute. Let's plug it in right here. I want to store a random value between zero and one. So I'll keep it at float and I want it for every instance. So let's switch this over to instance and we'll name this random value. So R A N V and the value is just going to come out from a random value node. So let's plug this in right there. And this might not work because we're looping it. So it's different particles. This definitely won't work. In fact, let's just see if this works. Maybe I can plug in index for the ID and that might work. Let's just test it out, see what happens. Let's plug this into a material socket. So let's search for a set material, plug that in right there, choose whatever material you want. I'll use the default because we're not using that anywhere else. After which I'll switch my viewport shading to rendered and my render properties I'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then I'll switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. I'll bring this up and I'll press period to centralize the nodes. Now I'll press shift A and search for an attribute node. And again, remember, we were doing it for every instance. So let's switch this from geometry to instancer. Let's search for ran V. And for now, I'll just plug the color into the emission so that I can see it better. And I'll switch off the default light as well. Now, clearly we are getting a random value for each instance, which is exactly what we wanted. But let's see if it's looping. So between frame 600 and frame 300, we should not see any difference. And we actually don't see any difference. Let's actually switch back to my geometry node editor and see whether it was because we used the ID. Let's just remove this. And now you see if we go to frame 600, it still is the exact same. So we did not need to plug in the index over there. So this will loop. That's perfectly all right. Let's switch back to the shader editor and start playing around with the actual colors. So I obviously don't want it to just be black and white. Let's switch my world settings such that the world is black. Then let's switch this from object to world and just add in some volume scatter as well. Press shift A, search for a volume scatter, plug that into the volume and then just reduce the density, but keep it so high that that central region is not really seen. So maybe a value of 0.2. Now let's switch back to the object material Material and the emission strength, I'll maybe increase that to 1000 or maybe 10,000. And of course, I'm going to switch the bloom over to clamp it down at four. Now let's search for a color ramp node, plug that in right here. Let's choose a few good colors. So I'll just press this plus button to add in a new stop. Maybe I'll go with sunset colors. So blue, orange, yellowish colors. So a nice blue like that. This one can be the orangish color. So yeah, maybe this sort of a distribution is fine, but obviously it's still not looking great. We have to figure out how to fix that. I essentially just want this region to become much darker so that it appears like these are coming out from some sort of a mist. Maybe I'll press shift A and search for a UV sphere. I'll just scale the UV sphere up just to about this sort of a size. Then I'll add in a new material and give it a principled volume. So let's just delete this principled PSDF, search for a principled volume, plug that into the surface and see what we get. Okay, nothing can be seen. Maybe we'll reduce the density to 0.1. Oh, I'm plugging it into the surface. I should have plugged it into the volume. Now let's increase the density back to one, see what we have. And okay, yeah, this is definitely not going to work, especially since we're in EV, it's always going to come out as a box. So let's delete this sphere or instead of deleting it, maybe I'll just use some geometry nodes. So let's switch over to the geometry node editor, press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and the group input will just search for a mesh to volume node, plug that in. Let's get rid of the material for now. Let's increase the density. Maybe a value of 25 will work good enough. And yes, now we have these particles coming out from a complete void. It's looping. It's coming out of a void. I think that's actually all there is for this animation. Of course, I should have made these particles a lot less dense. I might do that just before rendering. I'll play around with the size of this sphere and things like that. But overall, that should be all there is to create an animation just like this. If you're 
happy with the way everything looks, you can go to your output properties, choose the correct output folder, double slash will save it wherever you store your blend file. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4. And output quality, I'm going to choose Perceptually Lossless. Once I'm happy with all of that, I'll go ahead and press Render Animation. Using geometry nodes to create volumetrics is actually a very powerful tool and you can check out more in this video over here where we create this dreamy cloud wallpaper using that particular technique. Apart from that, if you want to check how you can loop geometry nodes, you can definitely take a look at this other video, which I will link right now, which will show you how to create one of those abstract loops that can be used in backgrounds of various videos. The video that I ended up creating today, now that I look at it, is very similar to this particular video, which you should also take a look at if you haven't already. If you like any of these videos, definitely check out other videos on my channel as well, because I post videos every single day so there's definitely something or the other just waiting for you to discover it till my next video comes out tomorrow thank you so much for watching keep creating and don't forget to stay creative